Hello guys, welcome back to the CCNA routing and switching video series. In this video, we are going to have a look at the CDP protocol. The objectives for this video are to understand why we use CDP and how to configure CDP and also how to use show commands to view the awesome information that CDP gives us. So to begin with, what is CDP? So CDP, that stands for Cisco Discovery Protocol. All CDP is, it's a layer 2 protocol. Now, I know what you're thinking. What do you mean lay layer 2 ABDA? Do you mean that this protocol replaces Ethernet? No, it doesn't. So the reason why CDP is, a layer, is classed as a layer 2 protocol, the reason being, is because when CDP actually creates the, the data that it's that is going to be sent, that data doesn't need to have a network layer header encapsulated around that data. The way that it works, we build our CDP data, our CDP data packet, etc. Then we will encapsulate it with an Ethernet, and then we can send that data on its way. So CDP just uses Ethernet MAC addresses or some sort of layer two information to actually move that CDP data from point A to point B. CDP packets are only sent to neighboring devices. So that means that if you have a local switch, if that receives a CDP packet on an interface and that interface is enabled um, for the CDP, that switch is going to process that CDP information, but it will not forward that information out any of its other interfaces to any other neighboring device. And so the reason why we use CDP, the Cisco Discovery Protocol, um, is essentially a device will generate information about itself. It will then multicast that information out all interfaces that have CDP enabled. And the, the reason why it does that, it wants to tell neighboring devices about itself. So essentially, it wants to tell the neighboring devices information about itself. And this is very, very important because then we can literally jump onto a, onto a um, Cisco device, we can enter a few commands, and then, and then from that, we can work out what, we, um, what device is plugged into what port. So we can work out, okay, so this switch is connected to a firewall, it's connected to another switch, it's connected to a router, etc. We can work out all the information just from a CDP. So essentially, this is what CDP does. In this case, we have this single switch. It's connected to multiple other Cisco devices. So it's important to know, CDP is a Cisco proprietary protocol. That means it can only be used with Cisco devices. So only Cisco devices can run CDP, and only Cisco devices will actually under be able to understand CDP packets. And so this is what the device does. It essentially just multicast a CDP packet. Again, CDP, we, we build that... CDP data, we encapsulate it only in a layer two header and trailer. The reason being, and we only send it with layer two information. The reason being is because it's a data link protocol inside the layer two of the OSI model. Because we don't need to encapsulate it in any TCP or UDP header or any IP header. It inside that layer two because we literally just, just need to take that data, encapsulate it in layer two information and send it on its way. And so all the device does is send out CDP packets at all of the enabled interfaces. So for CDP to work and for a device to actually transmit CDP packets, CDP has to be enabled on the switch and has to be enabled on those interfaces. And in this case, it will just be telling these neighboring devices information about itself. The information in some of the information included in the CDP packet includes stuff like iOS version of that device, host name, IP address information, native VLAN type of device, a switch, router, etc. All that sort of good information. And so, like I said again, the device will put the information into the CDP packet, encapsulate it in layer two information, send it out the CDP enabled interfaces, and it's essentially saying, "Hey, neighbors, this is who I am. This is information about myself." So let's let's dive a bit deeper into, into the CDP protocol. So by default, CDP is enabled on every Cisco device and it's enabled globally, which means that CDP packets are sent to every interface. Even if the, in, even if the interface doesn't plug into another Cisco device, CDP packets will be sent out of the interface. So that means that even if you plug in your computer or your server into a physical port on a switch or a router, etc., but let's just imagine a switch, that means that that switch is going to generate and send CDP packets to that computer. Now, obviously, this poses a security risk because we just don't want to send device information to our endpoint devices. Essentially, we could have a malicious user plug in a computer and then they could use Wireshark to capture that CDP's packets that are being sent to it. And then from there, they could find out information about that device that they plug into. Information such as iOS version, maybe IP address, what device it plugs into, the host name, etc., all that sort of good information. 
So obviously that comes in question that we want to actually limit which interfaces CDP packets are sent out of, and we can do that. So even though it's enabled globally, what, what we really want to do is just kind of have control over what interfaces the switch or the router will send CDP packets out of. Now again, it's more important for switches, the reason being because your essentially switches provide network access. Your endpoints will plug into the switch to actually get network access. So obviously it makes more sense to control CDP on the switch than on a router because a router will most likely only connect to other Cisco devices or other networking devices. So CDP packets are sent every 60 seconds by default and CDP has a timeout value of 180 seconds. So the way that CDP works is once a neighboring device, so once a device receives CDP in information from its neighbor, it's going to add the information to what's called a CDP table. So a CDP table just lists all the neighboring Cisco devices and information about that device. The information is the information which was included in the CDP packet that device received. And so as long as a switch receives um, information or CDP packets every 60 seconds, everything's fine. It keeps the entry in the table. As soon as a switch ceases to receive CDP packets from a particular neighbor after 180 seconds, it, it will it will remove that neighbor entry from the CDP table. So that's what we call the timeout value. So it essentially says, I will wait 180 seconds. If I don't hear anything from this neighbor, I will remove that neighbor from my CDP table. And CDP packets, they're sent to the multicast address of 01000CCCCCCC. So your Cisco devices, if they've got CDP enabled on an interface, that interface will be part of a multicast group. And essentially, the interface will listen on the multicast address for any packets with that, multi, with that destination um, Ethernet MAC address. And so the reason why CDP is so useful, because obviously our Cisco devices are talking to each other, telling each other information about themselves. But essentially, we can log into one device and see all the other devices that it connects to. Now, it's good practice for every network that you build or for every network that you work in to have a network topology map. Essentially, this will say, okay, this, this is the device, and these are all the devices which connect to that device, etc. all that sort of stuff. These, these are the ports um, that this router plugs into. Uh, essentially, so take a switch. This is, so the switch is, is plugged into this switch, then that switch, then this switch, then that switch, etc. However, if a network doesn't have a network topology diagram, now that causes issues because obviously it makes it harder to then troubleshoot. What CDP allows us to do, allows us to actually go into the devices, see um, the neighboring information. So see what that device that we're currently consoled into or connected into, whose its neighbors are. And then from there, we can slowly start to build a topology map. So we can see, okay, this switch, this is who the switch's neighbors are. Let me go into one of his neighbors. Okay, this is who its neighbors are, etc. So that allows us to build a topology map. Now, it's important to note that there are two versions of CDP, CDP version one and CDP version two. So some of the benefits of CDP version two is that it provides rapid error tracking features which help us detect um, the following issues quicker. So things such as mismatch in native VLAN. So over a trunk link, if, if either side has a different native VLAN, it will actually alert us to that. Mismatch duplex settings, more about duplex settings later. It also results in, in reduced network downtime because it can, track these errors, track these problems faster, and then report them to us quicker as well. And also includes a reporting mechanism. So it will either send messages to the console line, or we can actually configure the switch to take those messages and send them to a syslog server or a logging server. A logging server is a centralized server that we would normally use to centralize our login messages. So the, the way that we would configure this is that all of our devices are run of our network. We would configure those devices to send all the log messages to this centralized server, therefore making it easier for us to go through those log messages and then match up any log messages for certain events. Now, this shows, or this is a Wireshark capture of a CDP packet. So as you can see, we've literally only got the CDP information, which is encapsulated inside of a layer two header. That's literally, that's why it's a layer two protocol because it doesn't need any layer three, layer four, layer five, layer six, layer seven information to actually send this data. It only relies on the layer two. So that could be frame relay, that could be ethernet, etc. you name it. So the version is two, it will show the TTL, 
again this is the timeout value of 180 seconds you can check some to make sure that this data hasn't been changed from source to destination things such as device id which will be the hosting of the switch software version platform addresses port id so port id is on the neighboring device this is the interface that the neighboring device used to send this packet to us so i can see from now from here that i am connected to fast ethernet 0 slash 4 port on the neighboring device so this is the interface that the packet left from the neighboring device to reach us we can see the capabilities again vtp management domain mobile vtp later native vlan duplex voip vlan reply etc all sorts of information we can even see power available for stuff for stuff like power over ethernet as well so a whole load of information now to configure cdp cdp is globally enabled on the device we would use the command cdp run obviously if we wanted to disable cdp then we would use the global command so this command is, is configured in global configuration mode no cdp run so essentially you would negate the command to disable cdp to enable or disable cdp on an individual interface you would go under the interface like interface fa0 slash one and you would use the command cdp enable so again you can negate this command to disable cdp with no cdp enable or you can enable with cdp enable we can also use all sort of show commands to verify cdp so now i'm going to pause the video next time you see my screen i'll be on the console of a cisco switch and let's see cdp in action welcome back guys so we're now on the console line of a cisco switch so just to give you the scenario or how the network topology is laid out i've got a cisco switch and i've got two devices plugged in to that cisco switch now i'm not going to tell you what devices they are let's see if we can find out what the devices are based on the cdp information so to verify cdp the first thing you need to do is use the command show cdp and so this command will tell you the global information for CDP. So it, it will say to you, CDP sending packets every six, every 60 seconds. The whole time was 108 seconds for this device. So this means that, so this device itself, it's sending CDP packets every 60 seconds. Its whole time is going to be three times the, the packet sending interval. So in, in this case, the whole time is 180 seconds, which is three times the packet sending interval and so we're currently using cdp version one so cdp so sorry cdp version two cdp version two on the newer cisco devices like this is a 3560 uh well to be fair on most cisco devices cdp version two will be enabled by default and cdp is enabled globally so now cdp is enabled on on, on all interfaces so we can use a command if i use the question mark so cdp we can use a command show cdp neighbors and this command, why is this command going to tell us? So this command will tell us brief information about all of our CDP neighbors. So it will tell us the host name of that device, the local interface. So the interface on this switch, on this switch that I can use to reach that neighbor the whole time. So the way it works is that once I've received a CDP advertisement from that neighboring device, I will then reset the whole time to let's say 180 seconds, which is the default, and I will begin counting down. If I don't receive another CDP ad advertisement by that neighboring device, I will remove that device from my CDP neighbors table. Also shows the capability of the devices. So in this case, we can see that switch two is actually a switch and I it supports iGMP. Um, capability for this is host. So this device over here, it says host capability, but this device is actually a um, wireless LAN controller. And so you can you can tell from the platform. So at least brief, brief information about the platform. So Air CT250, port ID. So this port ID, this tells us on the neighboring device side, which port it uses to reach us. So in this case, I can see if I was going to build a network topology diagram that myself, I'm, I have a link which runs, which which plugs into FA0-8 on my local switch and plugs into FA0-8 on the neighboring switch, in this case, switch two. So it tells us the actual neighboring device, the port that it uses to reach us or the port that it uses on that local device that connects to us. In this case, I'm connected to master WLC via FA0-7 and he's connected to me via gig 001. So that's all good. So if I do show CDP neighbors, this here over here, we can see this um, um, keyboard called detail. If I enter this, this will display detailed information about every single CDP neighbor. 
So in this case, it'll, in this case, it'll start from top to bottom. So master WC, tell me the IP address of that device. It's IPv6 address if we are using IPv6. Shows us the platform. In this case, this, this is a 2504 wireless line controller. Shows us the local interface that we use to reach that device and the interface that the neighbor uses to reach us. The whole time, the version, etc., management. Um, addresses if there are any duplex which is full or could be half duplex but we don't want to use half duplex in any sort of network in the modern day Adver advertisement version so I can see this neighboring device is using CDP version 2 because the advertisements is sending to me are CDP version 2 and in this case it will now display the second device on our list switch 2 it will tell us again the platform that this is a 3560A port switch the capabilities of that switch so in case it's switch and IGMP Okay, the interface I use to reach the device and the interface that device uses to reach me. It will show us the iOS version, all this sort of good information. VTP, if that's enabled, native VLAN, duplex settings, management addresses, advertisement version of the CDP packet, all that good information. So that's good. But that lists detailed information for every single neighbor. What if I just want to see, see, uh, just see detailed information for a neighbor? Or single neighbor so you have to remember this isn't too bad because i've only got two neighbors what if i had 30 devices plugged into me or 40 devices plugged into me again they have to be cisco devices because cdp only works between cisco devices does that mean that i have to issue cd show cdp neighbors detail and essentially scroll down until i find the device that i want to have a look at or see information about no so if i go here show cdp neighbors just again to list all of our neighbors brief information show cdp there's a keyword called entry and so what entry allows us to do in this case, entry, and it says we can either list all CDP neighbors or list a specific CDP neighbor. So in this case, when it says word, we would just enter the device ID or the host name of that neighboring device. So in this case, SW2. And so the show CDP neighbor entry command will only show us detailed information about a specific CDP neighbor. So in this case, I'm looking at SW2. Again, we would do show CDP entry and then device ID. So I, the way that I always work here, I always do a show CDP neighbor to find out my list of neighbors because this gives us brief information. And then if I want to dive deep into information about one neighbor, I'll do show CDP entry, enter that neighbor's name. Again, this shows us the same information that we've seen. So device ID, um, entry addresses, platform, in the interface that I can reach the device via, the interface that device can reach me, software version, etc. all that sort of good information. So now that we've seen some of this information, and again, show CDP, as you can see, we can also use the common interface. This is pretty good. So this gives us all the interfaces CDP is enabled on. So as you can see, it's enabled on all of my interfaces, and it shows us the CDP information per interface. So the, the packet... Um, how often we advertise packets, the whole time, etc. all that sort of good information. We can use the command show CDP traffic. This shows us how many CDP packets we've sent, how many CDP advertisements we've received, um, how many, so again, shows us how many CDP version one advertisers we sent and received, how many CDP version two advertisers we sent and received, check some errors, invalid packets, encapsulation failures, all sorts of good information for CDP. Again, these show commands can be used when troubleshooting CDP, or we can show CDP neighbors to essentially build our network topology diagram from scratch. Now, moving on to the actual configuration of CDP. Again, the command to actually run or enable CDP globally on the device is, show, is CDP run. Okay, now that's enabled by default. If we were to do a no CDP run, I've exit from here. If I do show CDP interface, as you can see, CDP is not enabled. It's not enabled on any interface. Okay, and now best practice. Okay, let's talk about best practice. Best practice, you probably want to disable CDP and then just enable it on interfaces which connect to other Cisco devices. Like I said before, CDP is enabled by default. It's enabled on, on every interface by default. What you don't want is for your device to be sending CDP information to your endpoints, switches, so sorry, not switches, sorry, printers, computers, laptops, etc. The reason being, because it makes it so much easier for a hacker or a malicious user to plug in their device and capture the information. And now they have an idea of what device to plug into and have an idea of what devices we have within inside of our network. So best practice would probably be to disable CDP globally. Okay, so CDP is now disabled globally. If I were to do a show CDP neighbors, 
as you can see it's not enabled so there's no neighbor information now let's enable cdp on those two interfaces that plug into my switch and my wireless line controller so we're going to do cdp and the command literally is literally just cdp enable oh oh it's this is good this, this is good so this is another thing that i wanted to show you basically what what we would do we would have to enable cdp globally on the switch okay and then if we wanted to limit what interfaces we send cdp advertisement out of we would use the command no cdp enables so again this and this disables cdp per interface or enables it per interface no cdp enable interface fa 3 no cdp enable so as you can see i walked you through how let's say someone new would think okay cdp run means enable cdp globally if i turn that off oh that sh then that should disable it and now i can enable it per interface no the way that works cdp has to be enabled globally with cdp run and then if we want to control which interfaces we send cdp advertisements out of we have to go per interface and disable cdp interface fa 4 yeah no cdp enable Interface FA0 5, no CDP enable, and you and you get the idea. No CDP enable. So now if I go show interfaces, sorry, so CDP interface, sorry, you can see CDP now enabled on FA0 7, FA0 8, and only gig 0 slash 1. Okay, now show CDP neighbors. I've now got my list of CDP neighbors. CDP. Let's see what other information we can change. CDP, we can change the the, the timer. So, so CDP run, anything after that? No. CDP timer. And we can see the rate of when CD, uh, at which CDP packets are sent. So let me change this to 20 seconds. Except from here, if I do a show CDP. As you can see, CDP packets are sent every 20 seconds, but the hold down time is still 180 seconds. To change that, I'd have to go CDP whole time let's put this at 70 seconds show cdp interface so 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 cdp it's changed that and if i do a show cdp interface as you can see that's now changed the timer for how often we send cdp advertisements and also the hold on timer for received CDP advertisements for every single interface. Now, can we change that setting on a per interface basis? Let's see if we actually get the option to be able to do that. So CDP, enable, as you can see, and no, it doesn't actually give the option to do that at all. So again, CDP settings are enabled globally. And again, we would enable CDP and then you can go into the interfaces to actually change to actually enable or disable CDP. Now obviously, let's say that you've got a ton of interfaces and you can't be bothered to go through each one. Well, what you can do, you can actually use the interface range command. This allows us to apply configuration to a range of interfaces instead of a individual interface. So let's say I wanted to enable CDP for all the interfaces that I've just turned it off for. Let's go FA0 slash one. Okay, two, um, zero slash eight. Or eight, uh, sorry, six. If I go CDP enable, just with that one command, I do a show CDP interface. As you can see, I have now enabled CDP on, on interface one through six with just one command. So what you may do, you may actually go through every interface on your device, turn CDP off, and then only enable CDP on interfaces which connect to your Cisco devices. So guys, that's it for the CDP protocol. Again, this video was slightly longer than what I planned. But it's good because I've given you a deep dive into CDP, the information that we can see via CDP and why we would use it so that we can build that network topology diagram in case the designer of the network hasn't built that for us. If you have enjoyed this video and would like to see more like it, then please subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you have found this video useful, then please share so that we can get high quality IT training to the masses free of charge. Thank you very much for watching.